Hello everyone and welcome back to another video where we are going to be evaluating this fun little integral that arises in our next video. So let's get to it. The way we're going to start evaluating this integral isn't exactly as you would expect. We're going to employ what one might call a physicist trick and we're going to introduce into this integral a little extra x, namely an x to the alpha. And what we're going to do with this x to the alpha term is just keep it in there as normal, but then eventually take the limit as alpha right here just goes to zero. And that way we're just left with the original integral uh, that's pictured here, or that's drawn here in yellow. To evaluate this integral, we can employ integration by parts, namely by expressing the integrand right here, so x to the alpha, natural log of x, e to the minus x over uh, one plus e to the minus x. And when written like this, we can clearly see that this right here, so this expression, the integral of this is just going to be the natural log of one plus e to the minus x. So our integration by parts expression may look something like this. Uh, it's gonna look like x to the alpha times the natural log of x, and then times the natural log of one plus e to the minus x right here. And then we have the second half of our expression. So we're going to have our usual minus and then the integral from zero to infinity of, well, the derivative of the remaining terms. So what we're going to want to do is just distribute this, uh, actually I'll just uh, factor it out. So we'll have one plus e to the minus x. And then times the derivative of this term right here. So we're gonna have just x to the alpha uh, over x, so x to the alpha uh, minus one, and then plus natural log of x times the derivative of x to the alpha, which is just going to be alpha times x to the alpha, alpha and then minus one times the natural log of x. Now, if we employ uh, the bounds right here, so we have, we're evaluating this from zero to infinity, uh, clearly this whole thing goes to zero because, well, this term right here and this natural log, that e to the minus infinity, that's just gonna be zero or approach zero. Uh, so we get natural log of one, the expression goes to zero. If we take the limit as x goes to zero, we see that, the, we see that this natural log term right here uh, is going to go to negative infinity, but we see that this x to the alpha term, that right there is going to go to zero. Um, so if you actually take the limit here, we're going to end up with uh, zero. So this whole term right here is going to go to zero. So now what we're left with is just these uh, integrals right here because you know we're going to distribute the natural log. So uh, rewriting everything, we have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the alpha minus one times natural log of one plus e to the minus x and then plus alpha x to the alpha minus one and then natural log of x times natural log of one plus e to the minus x dx. Now, because we're taking the limit as alpha goes to zero, this whole term right here will actually just be zero. The reason for that being there is just an alpha out front, so this whole thing is just going to go to zero, right? So what we're left with then, we can just kind of put a big X on that, uh, what we're left with then is this integral right here, uh, the integral of X to the alpha minus one, natural log of one plus uh, e to the minus X. Uh, but we can express this as follows, uh, natural log of one plus e to the minus X, and then using the fact that we're taking the limit as alpha goes to zero, we can just say this is over x right here, and then just take the principal value of this integral right here. So from zero to infinity, dx, and we can just say uh, pv, we're taking the principal value of this integral right here. And what better way to do that than using complex analysis? So what we can do, we can say that f right here is just equal to the natural log squared of one plus one plus e to the minus x over x right here. And we just integrate around the following contour. So like our Pac-Man one, basically. So this one right here, uh, going this way, obviously. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, that should be going the other way, actually. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, it's gonna go to zero either way, but still. When we integrate f around this entire contour, the result is going to be two pi i times the sum of the residues. So. It's just the residue theorem right here, f and then dx. It's just going to equal two pi i and then times the sum of the residues. But where is our only pole? Well, our only pole is actually at zero and it's enclosed completely by this circular bit right there. So we're just going to have two pi i times the residue at zero. So let's go ahead and calculate that real fast. 
what we have is just going to be, so this equals uh, 2 pi i, and then we're just going to multiply by x, so we're going to have an extra x right here. Uh, just This is just the definition of a residue, really. Uh, natural log squared of 1 plus e to the minus x, and then over x, but those obviously cancel. And plugging in uh, 0 for x right here, we see that we have a natural log squared of just 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we have 2 pi i times the natural log squared of 2. Okay, great. But what exactly is our integral, or our contour integral, whenever we evaluate it, um, instead of using the residue theorem, just bit by bit, right? Well, the outside part right here, so uh, the bit going this way, that's just going to go to zero. Uh, but these parts right here, we need to evaluate. So um, we can also write our integral, or our contour integral right here, as the integral from zero to infinity of natural log squared of x, or sorry, not x, uh, 1 plus e to the minus x, goodness me, uh, 1 plus e to the minus x, then over x, the x, and then minus our integral from 0 to infinity, uh, and pulling some branch cuts right here, we have the natural log squared of 1 plus e to the minus x, this is all going to be over x, of course, uh, and then plus uh, 4 pi i times the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x, and then we're going to have a minus, of course, uh, 4 pi, and then squared, dx. But you see that a couple of terms here cancel, namely this term right here and this term right here. And then let's go ahead and rewrite everything. So we know that this is going to be equal to then uh, this negative uh, integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x uh, times 4 pi i, of course, and then divided by x, and then minus this 4 pi squared over x right here. Now, the interesting thing is that we know that this integral right here is going to be real valued uh, because, you know, it, it comes from the, or the principal value of it, at least, is going to be real valued because it's going to come, it came from um, the integral which we know only has a real value. So we know that these two right here are equal, uh, and we know that the above right here, so this is just a real number, therefore this must also be a real number. Which means that, you know, scrolling into here, this means <laughs> that this right here is going to be a real number, but then times an imaginary one, so it's going to be an imaginary number, whereas this right here, uh, that right there is just going to be some uh, real number. But just taking the imaginary parts of both sides of the equation here, this term right here just drops out, so we don't have to worry about that uh, possible infinity right there. And instead, we get this expression right here. So kind of, I'll scroll up. Instead, what we get is 2 pi i times the residue at 0, uh, which is natural x squared at 2, uh, is equal to minus 4 pi i and then times this integral right here. And since we want to solve for this integral, uh, we can just divide both sides by minus 4 pi i, and what we end up with is negative 1 half times natural log squared of 2. And that right there is just going to be the value for our integral. It's just negative 1 half natural log squared of 2. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this shorter video, and I hope to catch you in the longer one about eta and zeta and derivatives uh, later. Thank you for watching.